Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, please accept my best wishes as you steer the work of the Security Council for the month of July. My respectful greetings to members of Security Council. My heartfelt greetings to my brother, Mr. Sami Shukri, and my sister, Mr. Maryam Al Sadiq. I also recognize and thank His Excellency, Her Excellency Inga Anderson, and the special envoy, Harafit Jaffrey, for their participation. And also, I appreciate the representative of the AU chair addressing this August gathering. In this meeting and the deliberation of the Council, where a hydroelectric dam is under scrutiny in an unprecedented manner. I'm not sure if I'm not the first water minister addressing this council. Ethiopia believes it is unfitting use of the time and resources of the UN Security Council to discuss the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. Having said that, Mr. President, it is an honor for me to speak before this August body, voicing the concerns and just causes of my country, Ethiopia. A year ago, on 29th June 2020, under your presidency, council members encouraged Ethiopia, Egypt, Sudan to continue negotiations to resolve the outstanding issues and expressed support for the African Union-led process to facilitate further talks. Ethiopia took part in the negotiation with renewed commitment and good faith to reach a mutually acceptable negotiated outcome under the auspices of the African Union. I would like to pause to give the Republic of South Africa a special recognition and our thanks for effectively facilitating the negotiation under the end of its African Union chairmanship in February 2021. Similarly, Ethiopia commends and stands with the Democratic Republic of Congo, the current chairperson of the African Union, for its relentless effort under trying circumstances, including the repeated disruption of the negotiations. Mr. President, we are dealing with a hydroelectric dam project, which is not the first of its kind in Africa or in the world. We are building a reservoir to store water that will generate electricity by heating turbines. For your information, the GERD reservoir is two and a half times smaller than that of the Aswan Dam in Egypt. <laughs> Perhaps what puts the GERD in distinction from other projects is the extent of hope and aspirations it generated for 65 million Ethiopians that have no access to electricity. It is also unique because the construction of this $5 billion dam is financed by the blood, tears, and sweat of ordinary Ethiopians. The guard is a right dam built at the right place for the betterment of people in the broader region. <clears throat> Our unfortunate inability to utilize the Nile River so far is deeply embedded in the psychology of our people. Two famous Ethiopians proverb underscore this point. Go one bishan kesa abate ebot or ya bailej watamo. Those roughly translate to the irony of the tribulations of a poor man yeah. who stood in the middle of a river That's and lamented about experiencing extreme thirst. Yeah. To change this generational lament, we have nowhere to look but the Abai or Nile Basin, in which two-thirds of Ethiopia's water resources found. 
in this mighty river, which we share with our neighbors. Our people so hope to extricate themselves of darkness and march towards it by building the guard. The dam has the fingerprints of Ethiopian, Ethiopia's farmers, pastoralists, daily laborers, students, businesswomen and men, and the diaspora throughout the world who ache out of who ache out a living in extremely difficult circumstances. In equal, if not exceeding terms, Ethiopians have best wishes and neighborly care for their compatriots in Egypt and Sudan. We have all the intention to live together in peace and cooperate for our mutual benefit. The GERD demonstrates this core principle of collective well-being and prosperity. That is why the GERD is one of the regional integration projects under PIDA, the Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa. Mr. President, Africa, the cradle of mankind, is currently the youngest continent in the world. Africa is set to reap its demographic dividend by investing in its youth. Similarly, my country, Ethiopia, has 70% of its population under the age of 30. More than 100,000 Ethiopians graduate from higher education every year. Not only that, about 30 million Ethiopians are in schools at various levels of education. Catering to the needs of this growing population is an imperative and existential matter for my country. The lives of Ethiopians that languish on the Sahara Desert attempting to cross into Europe, the migrants in the Middle East that sacrifices their youth to bring a better day for their families, the young boys and girls in migrant prison in Africa and beyond, the barefooted migrants that you are you see returning to their homeland in mass deportation from the Middle East deserve a dignified life. The GERD is a project, a people's project, and our humble attempt to realize this dream against all odds, we chose to act and act in spite of the arduous obstacles we faced. Instead of coalescing in this challenge, we struggled to prevail. Little by little, we are overcome. Mr. President, unfortunately, we are here because Egypt and most recently Sudan have expressed their opposition to this hydroelectric dam. It is important to note that our two neighbors have large and small dams and the canals they have constructed <laughs> with absolute disregard yeah, to the, the rights of other riparian countries yeah, exactly. and rejecting Ethiopia's repeated plea for consultation. Yeah. After a series of initiatives to address the concerns of our neighbors in good faith, we are compelled to conclude that their objection is not as such directed at the guard, but rather to, to stop any water used by Ethiopia. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, we have no viable alternative. Unlike Egypt and Sudan, Ethiopia has no considerable groundwater reserve. We also don't have seawater to desalinate. Exactly. Nearly 70% of my country's water is in the Nile Basin. Exactly. Even if we want to, even if we try, we cannot avoid utilizing the Nile River. Yeah. In fact, constructing dams is only part of our focus. Our main objective is maximizing our scarce water resource by rehabilitating nature and preventing further depletion through our Green Legacy Initiative, a prominent initiative of my Prime Minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed. With an overall goal of planting 20, billions, 20 billion trees in five years' time, mm -hmm. we planted 10 billion trees in the last two years. Mm -hmm. this, is, this initiative, which also consists of a seedling sharing outreach with our neighbors, is part of the Green Belt Initiative of the African Union. 
Nicole Apolidiev, and oh. Sudan to join so this afforestation exactly. program that improves resilience and increases water availability. True. Mr. President, it would be believe that an agreement is within reach, given the necessary political will and the commitment to negotiate in good faith. We have already reached an understanding on a considerable number of the issues. The African Union is seized of the matter and is ably facilitating our negotiation. That is why it is regrettable that our sisterly countries <laughs> opted to bring the matter to the Security they Council. Want. Our Lord to drag you to a discussion of issues on my, my usual disposition to explain technical details on dams and hydrology. However, I want us to truly appreciate the subject matter we are compelled to discuss, and we are speaking of a hydroelectric dam. That's all. For the first time since its establishment, this council is being asked to pronounce itself in a water development project. The Security Council is a political and security organ. It is unhelpful and misguided to present an issue that requires a hydrotechnical solution <laughs> to this global security body. Exactly. Mr. President, it must also be clear that the underlying problem for the difference between the three countries is the quest to preserve colonial and monopolistic status quo over the Nile. The approach of trying to solve problems using the mindset that creates them yeah. is what blocks our consensus yeah. on the gap. Sure. The Security Council is faced with the question to determine whether or not Ethiopians have the right to utilize the Nile River. Exactly. On behalf of all Ethiopians, I implore our friends in this Council and in this wider international community to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Do Ethiopians have the right to drink from the Nile? <laughs> Mr. President, as a point of information, allow me to share with you the latest status of the African Union-led negotiation. Mm -hmm. On 24th June 2021, the AU Bureau of Assembly convened a meeting to discuss various issues, including the GERD. The President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, His Excellency Felix Tshisekedi, briefed the Bureau and introduced his plans for the upcoming negotiations. Mm. Unfortunately, the Republic of Sudan didn't attend this high-level meeting. With the absence of Sudan in the Bureau meeting, the two countries have blocked nine meetings since the June 2020. We should learn by now. Ethiopia doesn't respond well to undue political pressure and interference. Ethiopia will continue to exercise maximum restraint and showcase cooperation because we are forever linked by this majestic region. Whether we like it or not, we will continue to drink from the same river and must learn to live together as a neighbor. I reiterate Ethiopia's long-standing commitment to the AU-led process underpinned by a belief that Africans have the wisdom, the technical expertise, and most importantly, the agency to address their challenges. We believe the phased approach proposed by President Felix Teshekede the chairperson, of, the chairperson of the African Union could help us work towards resolving the quagmire created by the colonial heritage on the Nile Basin that Egypt and Sudan are determined to preserve. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, allow me also to address the much talked about second year feeling of the girl. The second year feeling of the girl happens in July and August of this year. We have proactively provided the necessary data on the modalities for the filling of the dam. Let me be clear. The filling of the GERD is part of the construction process. 
This is clearly stipulated in the Declaration of Principle our three heads of state signed in March 2015. <laughs> the feeling of the dam, Mr. President, is pure physics. And once the dam concrete reaches a certain height, uh -huh. it should be filled. The water either flows yeah. through the bottom outlets yeah. over or overflows the concrete. The dam as designed will store water until it reaches the 13.5 billion cubic meters indicated in the filling schedule agreed to by Egypt and Sudan. It is only fair that country that generates 77 billion meter cube of water in pounds a small fraction of the annual flow, the annual inflow for its hydroelectric dam. Egypt and Sudan do not need any convincing as to the fortunes they will acquire upon the completion of the dam. In the wise words of Sudanese officials, the guard is an instrument of regional integration. The guard for Sudan is what the As Aswan High Dam is for Egypt. Here, I'm going out of my way to explain to you the absence of any trade caused by the guard. However, we shouldn't even have to litigate the benefit Egypt and Sudan will require acquire from the guard to argue for our legitimate share from the Nile. All of us, Nile repairing countries, are there to share both the bounty and the scarcity. None of us ought to stand thirsty watching the others drink. Through the guard, Ethiopia is summoning this common sense to prevail in the Nile Basin. Therefore, this council should not be dragged into the guard negotiation in the expedient pursuit of domestic political objectives, as an example. Mr. President, if the council consents to the powers proffered by Egypt and Sudan, it will certainly to be entangled with resolving disputes on all transboundary rivers. Interestingly, other than one island sisterly country of ours, all members of this council have transboundary water courses. Mm. We have dealt with and continued to address differences bilaterally and through basin-wide efforts. The GERD talks and the process we have undergone since 2011 gave us a major lesson. Hopefully, this process will nudge us to work towards our regional mechanism on the Nile Basin. In this regard, it would be regrettable for the Council to circumvent this hope by unhelpful precedent whereby the Member States impose through the Council what they should acquire by good faith negotiation. The Council should resist concerted effort concerted efforts to turn it into a pilot body on transboundary rivers of negotiation. Mr. President, colonialism and colonial treaties thwarted, thwarted Africa's ability to utilize its natural resource for the benefit of its people. The Nile Basin countries have recognized this problem and worked towards addressing it in, addressing it in 1999 we established the Nile Basin Initiative, and in 2010, we adopted the Cooperative Framework Agreement, or CFA, on the Nile after 13 years of negotiation. In this framework agreement, which many of you in this council have financially and technically supported, the Nile Basin countries agreed to share the Nile water in an, in an equitable and reasonable manner. Yeah. We replaced the colonial and monopolistic claim with accepted principle of international law. This instrument is now awaiting two more ratification for entry into force. The ins insatiable demands of Egypt and most recently Sudan are not about the most issue of the guard, but about the future development projects in Ethiopia and the other repairing countries. 
without an effective CFA and regional mechanism, similar application will inevitably come to this council. Today it is Ethiopia's dam, tomorrow it will be any one of the Nile Basin countries. The Nile belongs to all the people of the Basin countries. All the half a billion of us in the 11 riparian countries, and the water is enough for all of us. Exactly. In this regard, we urge our Egyptian and Sudanese brothers and sisters to understand that a resolution to the Nile issue will not come from the Security Council. It can only come from good faith negotiations with due care for the well-being and the development of each other. Each other. Ethiopia looks forward to continuing the AU-led trilateral negotiation on the ground. We have the solution at hand, and we can herald good news to the world by concluding a mutually acceptable outcome. Finally, Mr. President, allow me to respectfully request the Council to return this matter to the able and legitimate leadership of the African Union and encourage Egypt and Sudan to seriously and faithfully negotiate to reach a negotiated settlement on the first feeling and the annual operations of the GERD. We also request the Council to make this meeting the last of its deliberation on the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. There is no subject matter as far from the mandate of the Council as this one. I thank you. <laughs> Je remercie.